I like the dark. It's friendly. Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Box Office Poison. If you're new here, my name is Moxie McMurder, and I miss Bill Paxton, don't you? He was such a reliable actor, and you knew you were in good hands with a Bill Paxton film. Anyway, in this video, I want to talk about one of my favourite neo-southern gothic thrillers, which was actually directed by Bill Paxton, and it stars Matthew McConaughey and Powers Booth. I submit to you, frailty. Southern Gothic is a subgenre of Gothic fiction in American literature, which takes place in the American South. You're not from the South. You won't understand. Swapping cold and desolate castles for hot and dusty plantations. It's often described as including themes of dark desires and impulses, grotesque characters, dark humour, and an overall angst-ridden sense of alienation. Dark romance and violence, economic anxieties and the supernatural, the past and its effects on the present, taboo subjects like incest and domestic violence and racism, are all present within Southern Gothic. The term Southern Gothic was actually used to dismiss writers who were thought to be writing aimless violence, but it has since gone on to become a well-respected and well-loved genre in both literature and cinema. Authors like William Faulkner, Flannery O'Connor, Tennessee Williams and Harper Lee have all gone on to become an essential part of American literature. And when it comes to Southern Gothic cinema, there are some obvious examples, like A Streetcar Named Desire, Night of the Hunter, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, Eve's Bayou, and Daughters of the Dust are all representative of the genre. Frailty was released in 2001, and as I mentioned before, it was directed by Bill Paxton. And what a film to have directed straight out of the gate. It just goes to show that this guy really has been paying attention every time he's been on set. Paxton was the perfect choice for director, in my opinion. His start in Hollywood was working with Roger Corman as a set dresser, so eventually, when he was given the chance to direct a feature film, he knew exactly what to do with the budget, which for frailty was $11 million. He knew exactly how to get the most for his money, and the film definitely doesn't come across as a relatively low-budget film. In other hands, this film could so easily have been over the top, but Frailty manages to balance the tone of the film really well. Frailty starts when Fenton Meeks, played by Matthew McConaughey, walks into an FBI building and tells an agent that he thinks his brother Adam is the serial killer called the God's Hand Killer. The film is told in flashback, and we see how Fenton and his brother's life has changed forever when his father, played by Bill Paxton, wakes them in the middle of the night after experiencing a vision from God. He tells the boys that he's been chosen to kill demons. Good heavens! And wouldn't you know it, demons look just like humans. There are demons among us. The devil has released them for the final battle. It's being fought right now. But nobody knows it except us and others like us. One of the many things that really stands out to me about this film is that the dad is not your stereotypical southern religious crackpot who beats his kids and rules with an iron fist. He seems to have been an average, loving, single parent doing the best he can to provide for his kids. We see this in the flashback before his visions, but it's also reflected in Fenton having no fears about standing up to his dad and telling him that killing people is wrong, even if his dad does think they are literal demons. Only once does his dad's frustration get the better of him, and he still doesn't go so far as to hit Fenton, which is just not what you would expect. It would have been so easy to portray him as the angry man, but he's not and he's not one-dimensional. He's a good guy, a good dad, who just happens to kill demons, or people, depending on your take. Bill Paxton plays it so well, and if you take, just for example, the scene where his character tells his kids that he's been chosen by God to kill demons, 
in someone else's hands it could have easily become melodrama or just very silly but it's played so well and is so grounded that you can't help but just buy into it and the subtle movement of the camera as it pulls back reflects Fenton's backing away from his father and the distance growing between them. It's an excellent scene and a really good example of storytelling. One of the really strong themes in Southern Gothic is the relationship to the land, and frailty is no exception. The scenes of Fenton, this little boy, digging the hole for the dungeon, reflects the hot and dusty rural south, and when he's got his t-shirt wrapped around his head, you can't help but think of something like Cool Hand Luke or a sweaty Stanley Kowalski from Streetcar Named Desire. And the rose garden next to their house, which when we first see it is in full bloom and is saturated with colour, but when Fenton returns to it at the end of the film, it seems abandoned, grey and overgrown. Bill Paxton, Matthew McConaughey and Powers Booth are all from Texas, so there's an authenticity to the performances and the overall environment the film takes place in. Now, there's an argument to be made that the film is actually more about mental illness and generational trauma, and while that's definitely the case for the first two-thirds of the film, we're never quite sure how far we should believe the father and his visions from God. The best move Bill Paxton made in regards to editing the film was to listen to his friend and director James Cameron, who he knew from working on Titanic and Aliens. Cameron said that he shouldn't show the audience what the father sees when he touches these demons until much later in the film, that the audience had to be on Fenton's side during the whole story, so that when the twist is revealed, we're forced to reconsider everything. It's such an interesting and atmospheric film, and while McConaughey and Booth are doing a lot of the heavy lifting, considering the film has such a small cast, and so many scenes are quite literally just the two of them talking, but it works. It's intimate and quiet, not what you would expect from a film about demons and serial killers. Also, the two kids in the film do such a great job, and if they hadn't, it would have fallen on its face. It can't be easy to find child actors who can not only deal with heavy subjects, but can also really act, and these two are so believable. For whatever reason, Frailty is not one of those films you hear about much, which is a real shame. Whenever I bring it up to people, I'm always thrilled when someone else has seen it, and when they have seen it, they've loved it. It's got an old school sense of storytelling, which I really appreciate, and it's just a thrilling story that I think more people should see. I really recommend you check the film out. If you're in the mood for something a bit different, and you enjoy films with a certain, shall we say, Stephen King flavour, I'm sure you'll enjoy Frailty. It's a little gem that not everyone seems to know about, and I think it deserves a bit more love. If you're interested in some other Southern Gothic films, I recommend Skeleton Key, the Gift, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, Eve's Bayou, Angel Heart, Cape Fear, Hush Hush, Sweet Charlotte, and Stoker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. If you really liked this video and you'd like to help support my channel, you can buy me a coffee. If you really liked this video and you'd like to help support my channel, you can buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link to my account in the description box below. Have a great day. Stay spooky.